All right, everyone, Biden inflation does remain sticky, unfortunately, rising to 3.5% for the prior month over an expected 3.2%. Um, th this is a, a spike in Biden inflation, but it's not really a spike. I'm, I'm saying it rises for a reason. It's the same reason for which I say inflation isn't really falling if you shave off 0.1 or 0.2 month over month, because it's not a monthly metric. What this shows is linear inflation. It's better than a rise in inflation, but it's not particularly great because it shows eh, the Fed might not be doing rate cuts anytime soon. Soft landing has still not been achieved. You still have a significant inflation rate. Inflation is year over year. What this represents is linear inflation. It represents the fact that the inflation rate is not really going anywhere. It's not, a, it's not an actual rise any more than it's an actual fall when it falls by 0.2, because it's not a monthly metric, it's a year over year metric. The problem is that it's compounding too, and that's the worrisome part. This means that the inflation from the same month from the prior year where inflation was still pretty high is being compounded further. And again, it's remaining, as far as the devaluation of the dollar, the, the increase in prices, it's, it's linear, effectively. Um, this is the result of Bidenomics, by the way, by and large. When it first began, that first little spike that you saw towards the end of Trump's presidency, that was the result of Trump's rescue plan. It was the result of, of cooking the currency. Biden has done that and far more since then, partially, you know, under the table, I'm sure, for an extended period of time. This is Bidenflation. For months and months, as the inflation rate kept soaring, people swore up and down that it was uh, due to what Trump had done. Well, then, uh, when is the Biden inflation going to show up? Because, again, he spent far more. Is it going to hit 10% or something in the next year? No, that's because that spike was caused by Biden's policies, his bullshit policies. He spent a bunch of money we didn't have. And unlike Donald Trump, he wasn't using it to throw a lifeline to companies that otherwise would have completely gone under and cause so many bankruptcies that we probably would have hit Great Depression levels. Hate to tell you, but the bailout under the circumstances was economically necessary. Shouldn't have become so, but hindsight is 2020. Trump didn't lock anything down. That was the governors doing it. And uh, then you had the loss of something like 15 million jobs for an extended period of time. They'd been reabsorbed mostly by the end of Trump's term, and then the rest was history. Um, but this is not Trump inflation. At this point, you can't possibly blame anyone other than Joe Biden. How many years do you have to be into your term before you're the one where the buck stops? <laughs> Effectively is what I would ask people who remain uh, afflicted with TDS. This is not really a rise. It's also not a falling. It remains roughly linear. The problem is also it's still outpacing wages now, isn't it? Well, that's a big problem. Um, if the, the, the devaluation of the, if the, if the rise in costs continues to outpace uh, people's ability to pay, then they're losing ground. That's the other big problem. You've got that inflection now at this point. Um, people are, are spending more on goods and services. They're not making enough to make up that gap, and that gap keeps growing. And the gap, in the last year, that gap became sheer, uh, but it's still growing. It's just it's not growing as quickly now. Again, and it's an improvement, it's just it's not a good financial situation. All of the Paul Krugmans of the world can ramble and rave as much as they want about how people just don't understand how good they have it. The economy's actually doing pretty well. Yeah, except for that one real sticking point. I would note that plus uh, uh, debt being held by the average household, that's skyrocketing. Most of the jobs being created are the replacement of full-time jobs with part-time jobs. Full-time jobs are being lost right now. People are taking out multiple side hustles in a really, really wonky economy. It's, it, to the point, hey, you're in the lower middle class, so five years ago, you know, you didn't have to eat ramen. All of a sudden, the cost of everything skyrockets, but you're not making as much money as you were before uh, commensurate with that inflation. Uh, now, all of a sudden, I've got two choices. I can start skipping meals or I can get a side hustle. Well, technically, I've got a third choice. I can also take out a credit card to buy groceries and hope the situation improves next year. Some people are incapable of shaving anything further off their lifestyle. They're living paycheck to paycheck as it is. And so they've got that crushing choice. Take out debt to buy the food that I need and to pay my bills and say, hey, fucking payday loans and, and you know, loan sharking bullshit like that or I can find a side job. But the problem is not everyone's in a position where they can feasibly find a side job. 
It has to coincide with their current job. Uh, Time-wise, you know, it has, to, it has to be forgiving. And it's going to have to pay enough to be worth it to actually transit to work. And again, with the wages stagnating below the inflation rate and the fuel costs, you know, sometimes that's just not the case. Um, again, there's a reason why the garden is being massively expanded because food prices, uh, I don't see them coming down anytime soon. And I would like some organic tomatoes, you know, better than the ones you get in the store anyway. Uh, I want to make my own tomato juice. That's what I'm talking about. Um, the, the long and short of it is that Bidenomics has been an unmitigated disaster. From top to bottom, it's been a disaster. The only thing that you can claim is low unemployment, but that's in a, a job market that is faltering. A job market that is now hemorrhaging full-time jobs in favor of part-time jobs, and the unemployment rate can't really fall any further because how many jobs are there available? For, literally, you're always going to have some structural unemployment anyway, and it's to the point where a lot of those people are underemployed and double employed at that. Well, we created 10 million jobs. Well, yeah, but if they're all 10 million people taking out side hustles, it's not really going to grow your economy at all. The productivity remains the same. It's just that people are more stressed. And you're going to end up in an economy where uh, uh, Bernie came out the other day. Well, we need a four day work week. Um, no, actually, what's going to end up probably happening is the necessity of people working like 45 hours a week to buy groceries. Thanks, Biden. Really cool. That's about all. Peace out.